the top of Thomas Street there, that's the building. That was MB Parker, where Elvis worked for roughly six weeks in the summer of 53, after leaving school. But a highly significant time um, while working there, because it was while he was working at MB Parker that he actually went to, to the Memphis Recording Service to uh, pay us three dollars and eighty-eight cents for uh, to record a demo. This is where Elvis came that day in July, nineteen fifty-three, to make a recording of uh, my happiness, and that's when your heartaches begin. Uh, so I'm suitably unimpressed with that and uh, Elvis came back here in January 1954 and recorded paid his money and recorded another two songs I'll never stand in your way and it, and it wouldn't be the same without you Just a couple of weeks after recording his second demo in January 54 at Memphis Recording Service Elvis was attending the Assembly of God Church up on Macklemore in South Memphis on 24th of Jan Sunday, 24th of January. And that's where Dixie Lock first noticed Elvis. And uh, Dixie mentioned quite loudly to her friends that he was going to the Rainbow Roller Room the following Saturday. Loud enough, hopefully, for Elvis to overhear her. And sure enough, the next Saturday, 30th of January, when she came to the roller, roll, when she came to the rainbow roller drum, Elvis was there too, and uh, and that's where they uh, got together for the first time. The rainbow roller drum was here, um, just here on Lamar Avenue. This is Lamar Avenue. There's an old here now, but uh, originally the rainbow roller drum skating rink, um, the terrace room restaurant, and the rainbow. Lake Swimming Pool were here. It was a complex owned by the Pieracini family, um, who also owned the Clearpool complex down further down Lamar. There, they said it's it's a, it's an oldies now, but if you can imagine, I'm, I'm practically on the roadside here. Um, so this, just like oldies is now, it's um, old car park in front, but the terrace room and um, roller dome building was joined together and they the left the, the, the left hand side of the terrace room restaurant then would have been more or less in line with all these there and would have started would have started looking at aerial photos would have started right at the end of the wall there the roller drum was eventually to close later in the 60s And it is said uh, between uh, January of 54 and uh, when Elvis was called back by Sam on 26th of June 54 that Elvis would pop in frequently through the first few months of the year. Uh, Johnny Bragg of the Prisoners uh, states that Elvis was here once at a recording session helping him with his diction. But anyway, so he was, Sam called Elvis back here, 26th of June, to try try and cut the song he'd found in Nashville called Without You. Um, and successfully, so he was trying out a few different other things, but Elvis just seemed to be intent on singing ballads. Elvis, uh, Sam wasn't too keen on that. So, so he calls up Scotty Moore. Scotty Moore had been hanging around the studio. They, uh, he was in the group the Starlight Wranglers and they had a record out on the Sun. So Scott, he was hanging around the studio trying to learn more about the recording business. Sam suggested he help us hang out with, uh, do a bit of rehearsing with Scott, he'd see if they could come up with anything. So that's how it was that Elvis, Scotty found Elvis and uh, Elvis went to Scotty's house on Independence Day, July 4th. This was the, Ellis, the site of the Ellis Auditorium. A few days after Elvis had, uh, got the, had tried out at 
the Memphis recording service with Sam Phillips. 2nd of July 1954, two of the Blackwood Brothers group had been involved in a, had died in a plane crash uh, right at the end of June there and on the 2nd of July Elvis attended the memorial service here at the Ellis Auditorium along with his parents and his current girlfriend Dixie Locke. And just two days later he was at Scotty Moore's house on belts. It was Sunday July the 4th 1954. Scotty called Bill Black up who lived just a couple of doors down the street. Running through songs to try and try and find a style really. Um, not highly successful. Scotty Moore and Bill Black were both uh, unimpressed really but uh, of course the very next day 5th of July they went in to record. Elvis, Scotty and Bill are in here in the recording studio in Memphis recording service when I tried a few slow ballads I love you because and harbour lights nothing working and then Elvis doing a break started fooling around with that's all right mama and uh, the rest is history there so that was the 5th of July 1954. So, so it's been noisy here, got the uh, interstate going overhead, but of course 5th of July Elvis recorded that's all right in the Memphis recording service. The following night, July 6th, 1954, Dewey, DJ Dewey Phillips on WHBQ, which was out of Chiska, further south on Main there, uh, played the record. Elvis was too nervous to listen to it on the radio that night, so he came to the cinema, the Cezor number no. two cinema. There were two other Cezors here in Memphis, one was up on Jackson, and this the one here was Cezor number two on North Main. Now, the exact location has been lost to time since the interstate uh, um, got rid of so many buildings. But roughly, this is Winchester, this ro closed road here, which, as you see, bends down to the right there, down to Lauderdale Court. So this bend in the road is a uh, a result of the interstate being built. Originally Winchester came straight, there was no bend in the road, it came straight and would have come out somewhere under the interstate here. And this is all number two would have been, from what I can tell on some old aerial photos, it would have been immediately, immediately north of the um, Winchester Junction, which Roughly, would have placed it just across the road there. I know we did a video two years ago um, of all Elvis-related stops in Memphis, where I had the cinema down there. Um, but that I've seen the aerial photos since then. Of course, I have, didn't account for Winchester actually coming at an angle up to me now, whereas it came up straight before the interstate was built. So of course this is where Elvis's parents found him and got him down to Hotel Chiska down the far further end of Maine there for his uh, interview with Dewey Phillips. So Hotel Chiska. Bill is a derelict for many years, the uh, Hotel Chiska. At one point it was sort of just behind the Peabody perhaps as uh, one of the finest hotels in Memphis. Like most downtown areas, it fell in decline late 60s and uh, it stood there like for many, many years. It's been reopened now as apartments and you can actually stay here now. It's uh, called Stay Alfred. So, Hotel Chiska. That's where Elvis came on 6th of July to be interviewed on Dewey Phillips' Red Hot and Blue show on WHBQ, which uh, broadcast out off the mezzanine floor of the Chiska, or as Dewey Phillips called it, the magazine floor. It's well known that he asked him what school he attended, uh, which, to which Elvis, uh, which school he had, he had attended, which Elvis replied to side just to clear up that the Elvis was indeed white. Yeah, so that's the hotel to Skinner. 
And due to the success of That's Alright on the radio that night, um, Sam Phillips got Elvis, Scotty and Bill. The next night, on the 7th of July, got them back into the studio to record a B-side, which is where they recorded Bill Monroe's Blue Moon of Kentucky. And again, it was a more impromptu rather than a planned recording when uh, this time Bill Black started fooling around. Um, doing a little imitation of Bill Monroe. Uh, which Elvis picked up, but again, if you listen to the outtakes, Elvis's first uh, first attempt was more like Bill Monroe's original. It was a slow waltz, but uh, by the time he'd finished with it, of course, it was uh, pure rockabilly.